I have this thing called, you know, this belief that's called relational capital. That means I, re I invest in relationships which creates, which is like investing in, you know, sort of uh, money. How do you do that? Um, I give. So just, just like I came here, yesterday I missed the entire event because I went to every single vendor's table and said, how can I help you? You wanna make money? You gotta to talk to this guy. What's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Cipolla here, hailing to you from the Clever Talks 2018 conference here in Sand Dog. I'm here with Steven Kuhn. Nice you to know, meet you, sir. You as well. Very nice good. Thanks thank, thank for having me. I've known him online. I, I, uh, I just didn't think he was this big. I mean, <laughs> there go, man. He's a tank commander for crying out loud. Let's talk about that. There's, there's a storm, yeah, right. Bronze Star, right. freaking war hero. No. But yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was there. You. I was there, and, and you know, you do what you do, and then yeah. they decide what you get. Pretty much, that's it. So typical war hero humbleness, man. That's, <laughs> that's what you get. Talk to us about your transition, officer. No, uh, nope. NCO. 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 Yeah. And then, and then you got, and then you went to uh, get your degree. Right. Get your college. I was stationed in Germany. They sent me to Iraq. I came back from Iraq. Decided I wanted to get out, and I got what they call a European out. Okay. So I got out in Europe. I, I never came back to the States. Okay. So I walked off base, I was a civilian. And in Europe? In Europe, in Germany. And, and then I went to Berlin. I was in Schweinfurt at the time, which is still oh, in Germany. Okay. And I went to Berlin, and I said, now what? Right? And that's what everyone says. Every time I talk to veterans, they go, I'm, I'm thinking about getting out, I'm getting out, or I got out. And they all say, now what? How do I replicate that, what I have in the, in the military, that meaning, that purpose? How do I replicate it in the civilian life? And so that was my journey. I started as a doorman, then I was security, and then you know just went from there, and I moved up, and I had some cocktail bars, and, I, yeah. and then I opened the nightclub, and that got me into a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> as one is you know, an owner of a nightclub, it's completely different as when you're a guest, and you can imagine. So, so a lot of people from church didn't show up to your No, 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 and I didn't, didn't show up at church anymore because I was still <laughs> drinking, and you know, it was just crazy. So yeah, yeah, so that kind so of stuff. So the past didn't show up to your club? No, or, no, yeah. no, unfortunately not, no. And, unless they were coming with a mob to sort of shut us down. But, and then it, it all came to a crash, and uh, I had to start over again and there were some PTSD issues and some issues with depression. And what we learn is to just yeah. drive through. Just yeah, yeah. push it away and drive through. And what that does is it puts off the inevitable. And, and a lot of people don't, I don't want to go down, down a rabbit hole here, but everyone talks about the 22 veterans that commit suicide every yeah, day. Yeah. And what people don't know is the older you get, the higher the risk becomes. So right now, over 50 is the highest risk of, of suicide veterans really? right now. Yeah. No and so I'm 51. <laughs> I'm doing well though. And, yes, you um, you know, and it's a struggle to get out and find your path. It really, really is. But for me, it's about being truthful to yourself, being honest with yourself, being transparent about why you do what you do. Yeah. And that's why I came up with the program HIT. Honesty, Integrity, and Transparency. I'm just curious before we yeah. get into that, yeah. what type of person were you, I mean, to get all this and yeah. just to stay in Germany after you got out? I mean, you didn't want to go back to no. your hometown? I mean, what type of person were you in high school? I was a doofus. Um, <laughs> you know, I played football. I was horrible at it. I tried soccer. I, I, I mean, I tried basketball. I couldn't play. I tried wrestling. I, the first wrestling person that touched me like almost broke my neck so I couldn't do that and it was like I just sucked yeah. at everything excuse my French but I was horrible at everything. Were you, little, were you skinnier? In, no in I was 240, 240 so pounds in high school. Yeah but I had no self-confidence. I might as well have been like a medicine ball just laying there in the corner because I, I had no self-confidence, zero. I knew that I had to leave there mm -hmm. to become who I could be and then you can't change who you are if your surroundings stay the same. Yeah. So I left to the military and as soon as that razor touched my head I put on a new face and I decided to be who I wanted to be. Wow. Transformation. Yeah. But then at, near the end of the army, I had to do it again. Yeah. Because, you know, I do it again and again and again until yeah. I find out when I got out, I said, I sort of felt like if I go back now, I'm putting my tail between my legs. I haven't accomplished anything yet. Yep. You know, so I'm going out into the big world. And man, that was a battle. So you got your education in Europe? Yes, I did. I, I got my MBA from Bradford University School of Business in, in Leeds. It's the second oldest business school in the world. Wow. Very, very, you know, I really wanted to go to that school to make sure that I have one of those schools that are accredited by all three organizations. But why, why didn't you come back to the States? Why did you stay out there? You know, my GI Bill would have covered it, but they didn't cover that. So I had to pay that out of, my, out of pocket, right? So but 60K out of pocket. Yeah, yeah. So 60K out of pocket. Wherever I go, mm -hmm. I, I find a way to make myself unique, to stick out yeah. and be noticeable. You know, I think the way you dress, you sort of know what I mean, right? Sure, sure. Well, it has a lot to do with attitude and it has a lot to do with presence. And I found a way through working with politicians, leaders. I worked with Mick Jagger. I worked with Olivia Newton-John. I worked with Andrea Bocelli. And I learned through them the way they act, the way they are, the way they present themselves, and the way they enter a room, how you sort of make yourself noticeable. And I learned through time to make that a part of who I am. And that just made me, in Europe, someone very special and very unique. So you modeled a positive behavior? Yes, of course. Of course, you know, and look, we're put on this earth to be abundant. Mm -hmm. We're not put here to be negative and be in horrible, horrible mm -hmm. situations. Anything that's horrible or negative is man-made. 
Yeah. People have heard it before is we're not, you know, a human having a spiritual experience, we're a spirit having a human experience. experience. And when you embody this, yeah. anything's possible. So I was in Europe, couldn't speak the language, learned the language. Now I know I speak German, I speak Hungarian, I have a German bestseller, I do German TV, I did the Trump election and then the inauguration as well on German TV as wow. a moderator and stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. and I just made it happen. So you're, self, you're pretty much self-taught, yes. is what you're saying. Yes. Outside your MBA, let me ask you a question. How much did your MBA really teach you to what you're doing right now? Some say a lot, some say a little. What about what's your What experience? it did is it put a name to those things that I was already doing in, you know, intuitively. So, oh, that's what Porter's Five Forces is, you know, or, oh, that's the SWOT analysis or whatever, you know. Yeah. And, but what it actually did for me is it slowed me down. It, it took away my intuition because an MBA teaches you there's a model for every business problem. So analyze every problem, never act through emotion. And intuition is pure Boom. Motion. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm doing Cut. this. I'm doing this, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, nothing's stopping me. And I got me in bay. I'm like, I'm doing, I better not wait a second. I better look at the, hmm. Hey, can you do a SWOT analysis for me? It's like, yeah. Yeah. so it took me two or three years to get that out of my head so I could react again. Sorry, act again instead of reacting. What's more powerful in your opinion? Intuition, 100%. Intuition is the only truth. Intuition is the only truth. And when you learn to live with your intuition, I literally drive down the street mm -hmm. and I take a left for no reason because my intuition says take a left. My, my, my wife's like, where are you going? I, said, I don't know. I just go. Walking down the street, I just change sides, I turn right, I go into a store for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Because my intuition tells me. And that's how I train it. I listen. Boom. Immediate. Yeah. So you got a start in corporate America. Yeah. Right? So how corporate, long were you in corporate America for? Corporate Europe. Corporate Europe. Um, yeah. Corporate Europe I did um it's right, not corporate America, corporate yeah, Europe. Corporate Such Europe. a cliche right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Corporate Europe's much different than corporate America. How so? First of all, the dress. <laughs> Wouldn't wear polos and khakis. It doesn't happen over there. Uh, no, so this is more like the dress that you would wear, the minimum that you would wear in the corporate yeah. corporate world in Europe, especially in the UK. Uh, which is very um, sort of old school, mm -hmm. very, very colonial, I guess you could say. And there I, I worked with uh, boards, I worked with um, uh, listed companies, I worked with the NASDAQ listed company as well, and the, 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 the London stock market. I worked, you know, managing operations, and I did, uh, I opened up 87 locations in nine countries for uh, a corporation. I managed and uh, trained the entire team of three and a half thousand employees. But you got tired of it though? Yeah, I did. How, I did. how many years, how long did it take for you to get tired of, of the corporate Europe uh, structure. I still had my cocktail bars and my and, and when I was in corporate corporate uh, okay. uh, England, uh, corporate <laughs> corporate Europe. It all came to a head about four years. So I went from no corporate experience to a director of Europe uh, with three and a half thousand employees within four years, and that, that was because only because of the military attitude. Because whatever they said, can you do this? I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, I better read up on that. You know? So, so <laughs> you're, like, you're kind of accepted, even though you're American. I wasn't accepted at first, okay. but I, I drove through and I said, yeah, look, whatever. I'll never forget the first job I got. I walked up and there was a line outside the door yeah. of, to, to go into the interview. And I was in a three-piece suit and they were all in sort of like, you know, just sort of like schlubber stuff. And the guy came out and said, excuse me, is everyone here for the same job? He's like, yes. I said, well, I guess I'm in the wrong place. He said, why? I said, well, I think I'm, I thought this was something else. You know, I thought, I thought they were like, no, no, come on in. And he went in, his name was Skal Hugo. He's from South Africa. They were bringing a company to Germany uh -huh. and I wanted the position as a general manager. And I walked in and he said, well, you know, I went through all the stuff. He goes, why, why would we hire you? I mean, you're, you have no qualifications or anything. I said, because I'm gonna, whatever you want, I'm going to take yeah. it. I'm going to overachieve it, period. That's just who I am. Yeah. And he said, wow, oh, wow. Do you mean that? I'm like, look at me. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. And it was done. And that's how I got my foot in. And that, that just spoke around. Like, you got to get Steve Kuhn. I broke every record in that company ever had. It was a 20-year-old company, and I broke every record within three months. But did you know anybody nope. in Germany nope. when you got? So you, you're starting to not only a foreign country, foreign network, foreign language. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty profound, man. Yeah, but look, I was yeah. American, right? Yeah. First of all, huge bonus. I'm the only American there that lives now in Germany. I'm not stationed there; I actually live here. Yeah. So I worked. Where did I work? I worked at Hard Rock Cafe, right? So you have expats coming in, right? Yeah. And then I worked at health clubs, and then I worked at bars. And what do you do when you're in a health club or a bar or like a Hard Rock Cafe? You see people yeah. who are, let's say, celebrities or the mayor, mm -hmm. and they're not in their office and they're not in their comfort zone. More, more relaxed, right? Right. So they're in my comfort zone. Yeah. So I learned quickly. I mean, I met the mayor of Berlin in the sauna. You have a relationship with Lisa Tal? No, it's, it's in Germany. <laughs> so it's in Germany. There is no towel. You're not, you're not allowed anything on you when you're going sure. to sauna, so, right. which is weird. This is how I met all these sort of powerful people, including, uh, you know, the, the dark side of, yeah. of the world, which yeah. helped me balance also and understand what this means. And it led me to the point where now, you know, I talk with political heads. I talk yeah. with, um, you know, business leaders. You trade your identity. That's basically what you did. Yeah, well, they, they said, who is this guy? Why does he pop up? Everywhere I am, here's this guy, Stephen Cohn. And who yeah. is he? What does he do? A long time yeah. in Germany, I was being branded as the CIA guy. Because they're like, hey, look, he doesn't really have a job. He's at like bars and he does this and he's always, he's got a nice car and he's always here and he's there. Where is he? You're you know? a Jason Bourne before his Yeah, Jason exactly. Bourne, right? you know, and and, and yeah. it really hurt me. 
it really, really hurt me because I was doing this political party sort of um, consulting. They said, oh, yeah, you're a CIA. And I said, with my mouth, CIA? Never. Yeah, right. you know what I mean? no, and right. now I've been there for almost 30 years and so I couldn't be because there's no one. No one's it's like a new home for you. Yeah, yeah, it's my home. Yeah. yeah, it's my home. And you live in Budapest, Hungary. And you just flew in just for just yes, for clever talk. I flew 15 hours to speak for 15 minutes. Yeah. How many people would do that? I don't know, but yeah. for me, it, it's a passion. I mean, literally, and it's not, I'm not just saying this. I yeah. separated myself from the military, from veterans, from anything military. I separated myself from that for almost 20 years. I needed to have that complete new identity in my with of myself. Yeah. And now I'm back. Yeah. And, and just in the last year since I started my online business of consulting, yeah. I've helped over 180 veterans with their businesses. I love it. So let's talk about that. Yeah. You know, you, you, got, you were telling me earlier, I got tired of the corporate bullshit. Yeah. And you just started your own right. consulting company. Right. So what was your first step? What was that transition into creating your own consulting company? I have this thing called, you know, this belief that's called relational capital. That means I, re I invest in relationships which create, which is like investing in, you know, sort of money. How do you do that? Um, I give. So just, just like I came here, yesterday I missed the entire event because I went to every single vendor's table and said, how can I help you? The nonprofits. Mm -hmm. I, t I showed them all exactly how to make immediate impact in their business, how to, mm -hmm. how to make money immediately. There was government contractors there. How do you get you know, products into Costco and into Walmart? Who are the people you need to talk to? And I just went to every table. So I said to myself, okay, I didn't see you know, the Hoffmeister, you know, David Hasselhoff, I didn't see anybody. I saw Jocko, you know, but I didn't see anybody else. And, but it was so worth it because I was helping veterans yeah. up their game. And so that's what I do. I find it. I find immediate revenue in your company because there's things that you're not doing because you don't know about it. Because right. most entrepreneurs are really good at what they do, but only at what they do. And they don't know what they don't know. How did you learn the skill set? Doing it myself. You know, like I said, I had, you know, I've opened over 20 businesses myself. Yeah. And of course, the MBA gives you some a little bit of help. And then, of course, I'm always getting coaches as well. I have, always have a coach. Yeah. Always have a coach. And I up it, up it, up it. And so the hard thing about going up and up and up is so the price goes up and up and up, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you're like, woof, man. You know, yeah. yeah, but it's so worth it. Sometimes, like literally, I had a coach and she got me on a certain podcast. I, I won't mention the name. She got me on a certain podcast and she, we went through the interview and she told me exactly how to, to, to structure it. And this was not too long ago. And I did one interview with this guy. It came out on a Monday and by Thursday I had 60 grand revenue from one podcast. I was like, okay, yeah, I see how coaching really helps. And it's that kind of thing that if you don't know, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. And that's what I do. So sales, lots of times a lot of uh, veterans say, you know, it's tough for me to sell. I don't know how to sell. Yeah. How would you answer that? Uh, you don't need to sell. Create, just create value. Just give value. And, and the way I started my, on, my consulting business here and the 180 veterans that I helped, no marketing, no ads, no nothing. Mm -hmm. All I did was a Facebook Live every day. And I did it in veteran groups. And I said, guys, this is how you start a business. Next day, this is how you do marketing. Next day, if you have this problem in HR, this is how you deal with it. The next day, this is leadership. Next day, this is providership. This is you know relational capital. This is this every single day for over. So a you year. broke down your process. Every single through year through live videos for free, for free. So they're getting your yes. intellectual capital for, exactly, free. for free. The question now is, am I going to do it myself and figure it out, and make a mistake, or am I going to hire you? Three percent do it themselves. To a certain point, then they come and get me. They make the mistake. I've literally had people who, like a guy called me from Switzerland. I didn't even know he was watching the show. And he said, look, I've shut my business down, started a new business in Portugal, and it's been a year now, and I've, I've done it based only on your lives. Wow. And then he said, now I'm at a point, I need you for real. Gotcha. You know, that, that was like, wow, it's a trip, you know. That's so, a yeah. crazy yeah, story. Yeah. And all I did was create value, right? I yeah. created value. You know, there's people that are here today that came to this event just to talk to me. Yeah. What's one thing you would tell a veteran that's in transition right now? to take the first step outside the traditional J-O-B yeah. right. that's so many of them, because we're entrepreneurs, yeah. what would you tell them? Well, it depends, it depends what your goal is. I mean, there's some, some people want to have that weekend off, they want to work nine to five, and they just want to worry about anything, you know? All I can say is this, look at your life as a life enterprise, and your life enterprise has to be balanced, your body, your mind, your relationships, and your business, right? And you take time, and when you have your life enterprise, you schedule everything. So you schedule your date night with your wife or your mm -hmm. girlfriend. You schedule a date night or, or your, your, your kid's night out. Yeah. You schedule your time at the gym. As a CEO of your own company, as an entrepreneur, the most important meeting of the day is the meetings you have with yourself. Yeah. And that is your gym. That is what I call magic mornings. Yeah. Where I get up, I do 10 minutes of meditation, 10 minutes of journaling, and 10 minutes of learning. Right. And then my family comes down. Because mm -hmm. I, I get up before they do. And I'm like, Let's start the day, you know? <laughs> and that's how you do it. And if you look at any successful entrepreneur, I don't care who it is, yeah. from you know Steve Jobs back in the day to whoever, yeah. they all have a morning routine like that. Right. Some of them get up at three o'clock in the morning. It's like, why do you even go to bed? You know, it's like, you know, they get up at three o'clock yeah, yeah. in the morning and they do their right. magic mornings right. and they're ready for the day and they go, and that's why they're successful. 
because they're focused. Yeah. Well, guys, listen, if you've been watching this video and finding a ton of value, I'm getting a ton of value from this conversation. You make sure you follow Steven. We're gonna have his information right here. And if you weren't watching this on our, uh, our live streams and you weren't watching this on YouTube, make sure you follow our Get Some Veteran Entrepreneur series of interviewing veteran entrepreneurs. Those are looking to do more, be more, and have more. That being said, Steven, appreciate your Thank time. You, Thanks for stopping awesome, in. Awesome, and by the way, brilliant. he came out to me and said, hey, can I do an interview? <laughs> right? How can he provide value? Yeah. He's not only talking to talk, but he's walking the walk. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you click subscribe to our YouTube channel and the notification to be alerted the next time we upload the next episode. If you watch this on Facebook, make sure you click like to follow our business page. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.